Hey, my name is Ronald. This is my software journal. Let's just get into it. All right, so here's the problem that I was challenged to do on my live stream and I took it right on. So right on this problem, I'm gonna be doing the ballot Sudoku. Here's the prompt. All right, so we got a little medium problem here. Determine if a nine by nine Sudoku board is valid. Only the field cells need to be validated according to the following rules. All right, rule number one. Each row must contain the digits one through nine without repetition. Row number two, each column must contain the digits one through nine without repetition. Row number three, each of the nine three by three sub boxes of the grid must contain the digits one through nine without repetition. So quick note, so the Duco board is partially filled, could be valid, but it's necess not necessarily solvable. Only the filled cells need to be validated according to the mentioned rules. It seems as if we don't need to solve this Sudoku puzzle, so that's great. Uh, we just need to uh, make sure you know we match the rules and see if there's any invalid uh, conditions based off of these rules. All right, so let's go into example number one. We have this example right here. We have this Sudoku board. We have the rows, we have the column, we have the sub boxes. For first glance, I don't see nothing wrong with it from first glance. All right, so the output looks like it's true. Looks good, cool. All right, example number two. So let's look at this board, this matrix, and see if we can make sense of it. So let's just say this is a box right here. We have another box right here. Uh, oh, we have this column right here. So this is not meeting rule number two. So this will be false. Cool. We know that the, the length of the row would be nine and the length of the columns would be nine. We got that. And then the digits in the boxes will have either one through nine or a period. So period probably meaning that is an empty space. Cool. Let's get into the first approach of this problem. First, I need to figure out how to check for the rows and columns in individual boxes and put that data in some kind of data structure that will be stored later to check for later. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we know the rows, I need to just transverse the rows and check if there's no duplicate strings. However, if I if it goes down to the next row, the top rows values aren't needed anymore. So I would just need to clear out that data structure and just check the next row. Thus, I should use a hash set in this particular case. So hash set as it is. So let me put a hash set. All right, so let me make a hash set. So hash set string, all right, we know that much. And then this is gonna be called row check set. Uh, okay, and boom. All right, we got that piece. So for the column check, I need something that will keep track of the indexes of that column and also the set of strings for that particular index. So thus, I think I need to use a hash map, the key being the indexes for the column and the pair will be a set of strings that I will be able to check later whenever I hit that index again. Because how we're gonna be transversing it um, we're going to be going from the top left corner and going to the right, and then we're going to go to the next row and then go to the left to the right. So we're going to go left to the right and then transverse downwards as we go left and right. I'm going to explain that later and we're going to get to that a little bit later in another visual. All right. So we're going to create a hash map and it's going to have the key as the integer for the indexes and we're going to have a pair a string of uh, the pair, the pair being the set of strings here. I'm gonna call this call check map and that should be it. All right, so now we need to do a check for the boxes. It should be very similar to how the column check should be. So, but there will be some math required in order to do the box indices and we'll get into that later. So, all right, so here we're gonna go and create another hash map and just copy that first row, you know. We, we don't need to do all this coding. And do box check, because it's gonna have very similar data structure as the, the column check. All right, so step number two. Now I need to loop through every single element so I can get the length. So I need to get the length of the row and also the length of the column of the board. Um, so I can do a nested for loop later on to loop through every single element of this board. 
So first thing I'm going to do is do an int here. I'm going to call this row length. And the length of the board would be this. So now we got the length of the row and the column. Now we need to do a nested for loop and essentially loop through the, the columns and also loop through the rows. So the first one we're going to do is here. And we're just going to make it plain and simple and just do another one inside of it because we already know. Whoa, la -de da All right, so for the third step, now I need to figure out how I'm going to convert these char characters into strings because this is going to be much easier to handle with in the code. So first thing I need to do is create a variable. I'm going to call it number. And number is going to be equal to board at coordinates i and j. And we're going to put that into a static method called value of and this is going to give the value of the char of these coordinates to a string and that should be it all right Whew. this is going to be a long winded video i tell you what all right so now let's get into the actual check of the rows so this is going to be the first check and now we need to figure out all right i need to check and contain all these numbers and i just want to check numbers and not the the period which is just the spaces so let me write an if statement that checks that particular logic of not checking for the period and see if it's you know not there and then on top of that i need to check the rows and make sure it doesn't contain a number when it's not a period. So if row check set does not contain number, then I want to add this number to the set to be checked for this row. All right, so else, if it does contain it, then we want to return false. So when we get to the end of the indices, we get out of the for loop. Now we need to clear that row. And when it goes into the next row, we should go through another indices of columns and then we're going to check that row for that board um, at the end of the for loop we're going to put row check set is cleared so we're going to clear all those and we're going to do a refresh of that set and get new numbers in there all right so now number five we're going to do a column check and so this is where we're going to do within that if statement for the row check we're going to check for the columns so check for columns all right first thing so we're going to start with a null map a check map for the column map so we're going to check if it's null first call check map dot get and then we're checking at the at that at that particular index of the column so we're going to make sure it is equal to null if it is equal to null then we're gonna create a new hash set in this statement block string type and then call it call set and boom and now we're going to add that number at that for that set for that new set then we're going to get the call check map and actually put some values in there for a key and pair so the first value will be in that index of that column and then this would be the set for that index of that column so as we transverse through the board from left to right going downwards is going to be updating this map to ensure that it, it gets populated. So this is going to be the first initialization. Then else. So if it's not null, then we're going to check, does it actually contain that number? So we're going to do call check dot get the value of that set at that index. Does it actually contains that set number? And if it doesn't contain it, then we're just gonna update that hash map. So we're gonna create another hash map in sense and we we'll get the old value of that hash map so we can update it. So call set. And then we're gonna use that constructor where it says try to get that set, that old set, or copy that set to a new set. Um, we do call check map dot get the old set here. Then we're gonna update it, the old call set with the new values, new value of the number that wasn't in there. Then we're gonna um, update 
update the column set for that particular index with that new set at that particular column index. Boom, very exciting. And then for any reason after all of that, if it does contain it, then we want to turn false. Thank you.